Hello and welcome to CFB UK, home of the UK's biggest college football fan page. For the fans, by the fans. And we're here again, kicking off another segment of 4 from 4,000. Why 4,000? Well, because we're 4,000 miles away from the States. If you haven't been here already, you won't know that, but now you will. So we're about 4,000 miles away from the US and we're bringing you interviews, exclusive interviews with NCAA D1 players. Now, as you might tell from the videos, my hair's getting longer, but it's not as long as this dude's hair. This dude's hair is awesome that we're about to bring on. Uh, you're here with me, Tristan and Lewis, and we're extremely fortunate to introduce you to our guest today, a Swiss army knife on the defense with 4-4 speed and natural, tra- uh, natural tackling ability, apologies. He led his team in tackles in 2019 and is a bright prospect for the 2021 NFL draft. We are very pl- privileged and to welcome, sorry, I'm just trying to admit him now. Please welcome from the Houston Cougars, live in his car in Texas right now, we've got Grant Stewart. Hello, man. Um, can, you, can, you, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, bud. How's it going? Good, man. Sorry, uh, my, my girl's car broke down, so we're just trying to figure out what was wrong with it. We figured it out. Oh, man, that, that happens. That happens. Uh, yeah. So how is it? Are you, you're not wearing a, a hoodie right now in Texas, are you? I am wearing a hoodie, yeah. It's hot, yeah. <laughs> you serious? Man, it's, it's, it's hot here, but it's like 60, and that's hot, so. Oh, no, that's not hot at all. That'd be amazing. <laughs> That's hot here, man. That's here. Well, we're so privileged to have you, bro. Thank you very much for joining us. We're looking forward to this one. So, we may as well just jump straight into it. So, my name's Nick. We've got Lewis here, and we've got Tristan down here. We're all spread out across England in different places. But yourself, you are from, uh, please tell me off if I pronounce it wrong, Conroe, Texas, about 40 miles outside of Houston. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what's, what's life like? I mean, this sounds a bit silly, but for UK fans, we'd love to know because we see Texas on the TV all the time and some of us might have been lucky enough to go one day. But what's growing up and living in Texas like as a, as a kid? Um, well, you know, I think on the website, it says Conroe on there. Uh, but I'm, I'm really like, I was raised in a, in a part of North Houston called Spring. Uh, Houston is really, really weird because you got a whole bunch of places called different names, but people still say they're from Houston. Uh, so, yeah, I was, I was really from Spring. Um, and honestly, just growing up, uh, it was tough uh, for me just because, I mean, I bounced around from, from school to school. I think I went to like 14 schools before I got to high school. Wow. Um, just, just uh, I mean, that was tough for me. But, I mean, it's really it's a, it's a football community. Um, it's a sports community, and it's all everybody talks about. That's like the news everywhere. Is we just everybody, literally everybody, just talks about sports. Um, so I mean, that's that's something that's I think different in Texas than anywhere else I've been, and it's really hot. But it's really hot. Love it. Yeah. Well, that's all we we'll hear about. Obviously, we do college football, but high school football in Texas is just. So famous. Obviously, a lot of it is through uh, Friday Night Lights, obviously. Uh, we watched that over in the UK. But, um, but that's really cool. So, high school uh, football, uh, you were a stud all over the defence. Or defence, my bad, sorry. Switching into soccer. <laughs> defence. Um, all over the field, safety, linebacker, edge rusher, all over. Um, and we'll get on to it later, but in Houston... Now at Houston, you, most of the commentators, when when watching your, your highlights, say the same thing. They call you the heart of the defense or defense. I keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it on there. You can the say it. That's fine. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the heart of the heart and soul of the defense. That's the quote. Heart and soul of the defense. So where does that versatility come from to be able to play anywhere across that defense? Um, if I'm honest, uh, I'm not. I'm not one of the most talented guys that that you that you might see in a Division One college football, um, but I think what allows me to just play in different positions or you know get out of my comfort zone is really just because wherever I go, whatever I'm doing, I'm gonna give like outstanding effort. Like you're gonna get every bit of me. Like even if I've never done a technique, I'm gonna do it the absolute best that I can for four straight quarters, and it's never gonna like it's never gonna trend downward. You know. The normal athlete, 
third quarter, fourth quarter comes around, they start getting tired, they start getting worn out. That's like where I pride myself. Like, nah, I'm, I'm fourth quarter and I'm like the same I was in the first quarter. So that's really, uh, I think, what allows me to just play everywhere. Um, and I think it's really just uh, my effort. Well, that, that motor of yours is something that everyone seems to comment on, that you just, that, that non-stop play every down like it, it's the last, even if it's special teams. But one of the, one of, one of the things about you, though, that I, I know, that that downhill speed coming attack the line from that sort of safety position has got to come through that, that, uh, that track running background, those Texas relay days. Um, right. So, yeah, so, so what, what, are you, what are you running about in the forty? Do you think? I think I think right now probably somewhere in the four fours. Uh, that's what I ran as a as a junior in high school. I ran a hand time four four. Uh, I'm I'm sure I'm probably faster than I was then. Uh, I'm I'm a lot heavier though. So yeah. But yeah. yeah. Where does that speed come from? Is it is it something that's been part of your game since since a child since young? Uh, uh absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> I uh. <laughs> You know, I really, I really was, a, I was always a mile runner. Um, I was an 800 guy. I had the, I was, I was always trying to be in something. So if track was happening, I was always running in track. Um, but I didn't start actually running track until I was in, I was in middle school. And actually what attributed to that was, uh, was like, like my, my, my mom didn't really have a car. Um, so like if I wanted to go to my friend's house or, go down the street or something and to me down the street was like three or four miles and I would just just run to go hang out with my friends uh, I would run to school in the morning I would run home in the afternoon uh, and so it, it it was more of like a like I said it's more of like an effort deal like more of like a, just a consistent I'm running all the time so I really started off uh, when I got to middle school, running a mile, running the 800, ended up getting the record at my school for the 800 because I would just sprint the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I actually didn't even – I didn't get on a sprint relay until the second portion of my junior year, right when I guess my speed started to kick in. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it was just like a lot of training, a lot of stretching. Uh, there's a guy named, uh, named Derek uh, Blaylock who uh, played in the NFL for like 10 years. Uh, he's known as like the, the speed speed guru, mm. uh, and so I was I was blessed to to work with him. Uh, I worked with him for about two or three months, and I think that really just helped push me uh, into my speed. But yeah, I think it definitely comes from just running track and just running every day, like as simple as that might sound. But uh, that's that's track definitely. I mean, helps me so much. Well, that that makes a lot of sense, and to be able to to practice and train with a guy like that is uh is awesome so it's got to help definitely so moving on to sort of personal side one thing that i know that you <laughs> believe that you've done it for many years is on your on your cleats you write jam j a m f uh i i, I know what it's about but tell me, why do you write jam on your cleats every time um, well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really big just with my, all my family, uh, specifically my siblings. Um, so, you know, the, the JMS or JMS stands for Jojo, Alex, Malachi, Samaria. Uh, and those are just the, the names of my four siblings. And, uh, you know, growing up, growing up, I was put in a position, uh, I was put in a position to where I had to be a leader in my home. I had to, to be a caregiver. I had to be a parent. I had to be a teacher. I had to be a coach. I had to be uh, a brother. I had to be a friend. I had to be a mom. You know, I, I had to be all of that at, at once, uh, especially for uh, JoJo and Samaria. Uh, and, you know, it just – it's a reminder for me you know, you know what I'm playing for, who I'm playing for, because you know most people would say, if you, if if somebody fully knew everything that I've been through, uh, somebody might say that, oh, there's no way that that kid is going to end up uh, having a positive life, or is going to end up actually making something out of himself just because I was put in so deep of a hole. And so it's really, 
it's a, it, I really want to set that example for my siblings so that they know that they can, they can, they can do whatever they want to do. Uh, 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 but yeah, I really, I really just want to let them know that they can do whatever they want to do just through their effort and through their, uh, through their consistency. Um, I'm really just trying to set that example and just writing their name on my, on my cleats. It, it's like a visual light or reminds me like, I'm like, okay, this is what I'm doing it for, you know? For sure, for sure. Well, family is really important, and I know how important family is to you. Um, and and that will be leading on to the question after this one. But uh, when it came to leaving high school and to uh, to, to going to college, you had some. You had a lot of offers, a good good group of offers. One of the offers you had was to a very very prestigious school um, in Yale, Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. Yale is a school that, of course, in England we know well um, from TV shows and stuff like that. But that, that has got it. I mean, obviously, you chose to go to Houston. Um, I'm going to guess, and we'll find out that family playing a part, being nearby, and Houston is a good school for football. But you, I mean, you've, you seem a very articulate guy. Uh, to go to Yale, I mean, to have, have that offer is something that no one can ever take away. You'll always be a guy who had the offer to go to Yale. I mean, that, that's got to be a huge accolade for you. Right. Um, so what a lot of people don't know is I was I was uh, I was committed to Yale for uh, a while. I was committed there for like you know, really maybe uh, four or five months, and uh, you know I was convinced that uh, that's where I wanted to go. I was committed to Yale for 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 a while, and uh, you know I was convinced that where that's where I was gonna go. My first offer was from uh, Southern Methodist University SMU. Mm. Uh, which has a, uh, it's a really, that was probably my best, that's probably my best offer if, if you were combining the, the, the academics and the athletics. Um, them and, and Baylor, I was so interested in Baylor. Um, but basically with SMU and Baylor, stuff has fell off. And they, they you know, the Baylor coaches staff got fired. And the SMU, uh, the guys, apparently they had filled up because they could only take in a certain amount of people. And I took too long to commit. Um, and then it was like maybe a week before signing day and, uh, Houston, Houston called me and, uh, they offered me and I was like, okay, I got a week to make a decision. And, um, so, you know, the, the Yale guys actually told me not to put anybody on the spot, but I mean, they actually told me that if somebody from Yale, to clarify, uh, <laughs> actually, actually told me, um, that if I was going to take the Houston visit, then my offer would be off the table. Right. You know, like if I even if I even showed Houston any type of interest, considering that I was committed to them and they can only take a guy because I, I, I didn't have like the perfect SAT and all that that you really got to have to get in there. Um, I was like I was like kind of like on the lower end of what they would normally accept. And, uh, you know, they were like, you know, we, you know, we can only take one guy at your academic standing. Um, and so we've, we've had that spot for you. Um, but just them saying that if I were to give Houston a, a a chance or something would take their offer away, I just really – it rubbed me the wrong way. Um, mm. So then I, I kind of opened my recruiting back up, made my options back available. Uh, but when I – and when I took my Houston visit, man, um, you know, my cousin actually played for, for Houston. Now he's on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, his name's Alex Myers, plays corner. Um, nice. But he, he – yeah, he was my uh, – he, he's my host on my visit and I mean that he just convinced me and uh you know I got I had I, I felt the brotherhood and the camaraderie with the guys and um yeah I was sold especially just just from a football standpoint that's you know that's at the end of the day I, I, I'm glad to get my degree I'm gonna graduate in December um but at the end of the day uh I'm a football guy you know so this is probably my best football opportunity so that's why I chose Houston but yeah, you said you said you are a football guy. That answers both my questions. And one, obviously, from Yale. The next question was why Houston, and you you explained it there. Obviously, close to home as well. That's gotta help see your family and stuff. Yeah. All, the, all the rest of the questions are about football, but I've got one question that's 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 not. And it's uh, I, think we, I think I know what your hidden talent is away from football. I've seen I've seen a video. You're a, you're a, you're a bit of a, a singer. Uh, in church, uh, 
good. You got some good good vocals. Good vocals. Um, so you do a bit of singing, bit of singing in church. Talk to me about that. Talk a bit, a little bit about your faith. I know it's very, very important to you, um, and your path to where you are now. Um, that that's that's something that's really important to you, isn't it? But yeah, I actually, uh, you know, my grandfather is a is a bishop, a uh, pastor at a uh, was the pastor at our church growing up, and um, you know, at first I started off playing the drums. I was wanting to be like involved in in the worship side of stuff. Um, so I was playing the drums, and then I would I would uh you know I would sing, and I was really bad, and I would kind of scream, and um, but I just I was always really passionate, so they let me keep doing it, and um, eventually I just really found like a a love for it just from the singing half of it not really understanding what it meant to to worship god and stuff like that it was just i was just singing and i was enjoying it um and i i went into into choir my in, in middle school and high school and theater and stuff like that um and it just kind of became like you know part of who i who i am uh but uh you, just with my faith um uh, you know i i've always claimed uh, to be a Christian, like my whole life, um, never, never understood what it meant. Never, never understood, uh, you know, what it meant to, to be a representative of Christ. Never understood what it meant to what, what Jesus did. Like I never understood anything, but I would claim Christianity and stuff like that. And, and even like take leadership roles with my school and stuff like that. And I had never even like opened the Bible, you know, it was more of a, a cultural association at that point. Mm. Um, but, you know, and I was, I mean, I was, I was making mistakes. I was, I was following the footsteps of, of, of people I shouldn't have been following, people in my family. And um, it really wasn't until uh, September of 2019 uh, when I personally had my, uh, my first real uh, like encounter with with Jesus and decided that I was that I wanted to to give my life to him that I wanted to to fully invest everything I had in this you know um and really try to understand and, and build upon that relationship um mm. so that could help me in my life and that I think that's the best way I could represent uh my family mm. and I mean since then since then I mean you know, worship has, has, has helped me in so many ways. Um, and it's just, uh, I think that, that it's a definitely, a, a probably one of my favorite things, uh, to do is just to worship, uh, or to sing either one really, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is for me now. And that's great to hear, but I can tell obviously it's something that's really important to you and, it, and it's clear through your words. Um, so no, that that's really great. That, that truly is. Um, so football, purely football now. Um, your freshman season um, didn't maybe didn't go the well. It, it possibly didn't go the way that you wanted to. It has nothing to do with what you could do. It's what unlucky thing happened. You had this little meniscus injury. Um, is that your first big injury? And if so, how did you kind of overcome it? Both physically and mentally oh man um is it my first big one uh i had a lot of issues i think with my like groin in high school um i had i had i had broke both my wrists when i was little uh, i had also lacerated my kidney in middle school Ooh. um oh. Tore my ankle up um, playing basketball. Um, no, no, really not. You, yeah. you faced yeah, it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this this it was, it, but this was the one. This was probably that was probably the most uh, like effective injury, I guess. Because um, I mean, it it completely took me out of a season that I really wanted to participate in. You know, when you're in middle school, you got friends and you got. Your, your stuff going on like I was, I was missing a, a football game in the eighth grade you know but um but yeah I mean that was a tough one just because I was actually it was my first start it was my first starting a uh, game in Tulsa mm. uh you know coach told me like you know you're gonna play 97 snaps this game like uh get ready you know I was like oh I'm excited 
So I go out there to first practice with the starting lineup and just tear my knee up. And I finished the practice trying to finish it and tore it up worse. And uh, I mean, yeah, it was really hard on me. It was really hard on me, and it was hard for me to uh, keep a positive attitude. I've never experienced anything like that. But I'm, I mean, you know, I, we never played sport at a high level, but I know what it can be like going into your first freshman season and thinking, you know, I want to make my mark straight away. And then first first game, sometimes it's just these these odd odd ways of of bringing us back to reality. But if you want to talk about a bounce back story, this is a bounce back story because you know you came back in 2018 and, and, and played um, a, f- a fair few games, but your 2019 um, was a huge year. You led the team in tackles with 97 total tackles, uh, nine and a half tackles for a loss, uh, and you had some really big games. Oklahoma, opening day, 14 tackles, huge standout game, uh, and a really good display against Connecticut as well mid-season, which I know was a good one for you. You bounced back massively, and not only bounced back, but went from, obviously, before 2019 started, you know, uh, the the talent as an athlete and the player was there, and, and now being talked about for next year's NFL draft. What clicked for you last season that, that got you to that such high level? Um, I actually want to attribute a lot of that, I think, to, to just uh, I had a coach I think is probably the best coach in, in college football, uh, in, uh, in Blake Gideon. Uh, he was a guy who had, who had played football at every level, at the highest level. Um, and, I mean, he just – he was so uh, personal and he was so involved and he was so uh, like uh, he really cared about the small, small, small details. And, and he, I thought that I had a high standard for myself, um, but he just like showed me that there's like, there's always a standard higher, you know what I'm saying? There's always something better you can do. There's always something you can improve with in every single play that you watch. Uh, that you watch of yourself, it's like, oh, I can improve here and here and here. Even though I might have made the tackle, even though I might have, you know, made the play because I'm because uh, my athletic ability. He's saying, you know, he just really helped me work on those consistent small details that I think just led to me, you know, being an all-around better player. But I think the biggest thing, um, and I mean, I love this dude, and I think the biggest thing that, that he did uh, for me was. Uh, like, I was a guy who had a whole bunch of stuff going on uh, off of the field. I was a guy who had – I would, like, I would, I would get really upset. I would I would uh, have tantrums. I would – I mean, I was – like I said, I was all over the place. You know, that that's reflected in my 2018 season why I wasn't playing. I was a lot of people know that. Um, there was a lot of personal stuff I had going on that I was letting interfere with my play on the field. And because Houston is, is kind of a coaching carousel where coaches come in a couple of years and then move up, you know, coaches are not necessarily concerned with developing that guy and trying to figure out what's going on in his life, what can we do to make sure or to help him personally, you know, and not to, not to call out any coaches I've had previously, but that was kind of the attitude towards me was like, oh, that guy has too much going on. Mm. I might just be here for a year. So let me just, you know, move this guy to the side. And if he, he's really good on special teams, so let's just put him there so he can be wild. Versus trying to, you know, see what's going on in my life mm. and, and really just, just pouring into me and, and helping me with stuff. You know, I mean, he just helped me so much personally. That was like when I'm on the field, I got to a point to where it's just football. You know, so I really attribute a lot of this season, I think, to that dude. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, so we've had so many people who can really praise the coach of giving them the time, you know, investment. investment in them as people, but investment in him as 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 the future. You know, the coaches are often thinking about they've got to, they've got to manage the whole team and manage wins, but they're there to manage players individually as well because you know they want them their players individually to get into the NFL, and that's 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 the that's that's the goal. Um, and so, of course, the coach has paid so much interest in you. He's not just kind of said, you came, in, you, you came in as a defensive back, a safety. He's actually looked at your game and went, I, I think he will really thrive at linebacker, a position that you could have gone to last season, but due to injuries and whatnot, or for other reasons as well, didn't. This year, it's been a lot of noise about you moving to the linebacker position. Um, how do you how do you feel about that, and how do you think that position will help complement your your skill set that you have? Um, 
you know, coming in, coming into this this past season, uh, you know, they wanted they wanted to play me a linebacker. Uh, we just didn't have the depth uh, at my position uh, to for me to move around in different positions. It was like I was pretty much the only guy, especially because we had a a guy named Jordan Moore who had to sit out uh, a few games, and he's really talented, uh, but he couldn't play the first four. So it was it was kind of just like me and another guy, you know, too deep. If I and they really wanted to play me somewhere else, but you know they 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 weren't able to. Um, you know, Coach Gideon, Coach Gideon uh, ended up going to Ole Miss. He was on a one-year contract, so he went to Ole Miss. Um, was happy for him there. But the the, the defensive coordinator uh, ended up moving me to linebacker, and uh, you know we got a guy from West Virginia came coming over, uh, Giovanni Stewart, to play my position at nickel, the little DB position. Uh, and and that Jordan Moore uh, Jordan Moore is able to play the full season, and we got Ahmad right there in the mix too. This has a year of experience, so we got a good solid three deep over there. So it gave me the ability to to be able to slide over to linebacker and gain a little more weight and and uh, be able to just play at the football. And that's that's really I'm just so excited to to get in a position to where the offense has no chance. I mean no. They have no option but to but to run my direction. Like they can't move me out of the box. They can't put a receiver up. Like no, I'm right here, and you're gonna have to run away from me. You know, I'm really I'm really excited for that. That's cool, man. Yeah, if they run towards you, they're not they're not gonna get any further than where you're standing. Love that. Love that. So uh, it's a big it's a big year for you. Big year for the Cougars. Um, going your senior season. Um, this time next year, we could be talking to you from anywhere if we spoke to you again, anywhere in the United States of America. Um, NFL draft year, um, for you and the team individually, so yourself and Houston, what are your personal and professional and, and team goals for 2020? Um, they're kind of one and the same. Um, you know, I was, I was. I was blessed to be elected as a, as a team captain, as one of the three captains of our team. Um, I was voted by my teammates. Um, and, you know, that, that meant a lot to me. You know, that, that to me was just like, wow, you know, I've been working hard and I've been doing everything that I can. I just think it's cool, you know, that my teammates, you know, feel that way about me. Um, so in a way, you know, my goal, my goal is for us, even personally, my goal is for us to, to go undefeated. Just because, you know, for once, for once in my career at uh, Houston, we have the guys to to not lose any games. You know, nobody's just scoring any points on us with the guys that we have upcoming this year. Um, is because I know that for myself, if you look at the previous Houston teams with guys who were going first round, uh, sending four or five guys to the NFL, you know, those teams were winning. Those teams were were Peach Bowl champs. Uh, and at the end of the day, if if you're a leading tackler on a defense that went four and eight, versus I'm a leading tackler on a defense that went fourteen and zero, mm-hmm. you know that that means something more, you know, to to an NFL team, you know, and that that's really my personal goal is to 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 you know form a, a group of guys and a brotherhood on that defense that we can all lead each other to to not losing any games. I feel like. That would probably be my biggest personal um, achievement is just to be a leader of a team that was elite consistently. That's really what I what I want. Love it, brilliant, a fantastic. So, yeah, what you say makes a lot of sense. You know, if you work as a team individually, so still see the spark in that team. So we've got the last couple of bits. Um, we've got a little. We've got a little game for you very quick we've played it with all of our athletes so far and it's called guess the brit and lewis you're going to lead this yeah i'll take this one so what we've got we've got 10 i think pictures that we're going to show you and basically we just want okay. to see, see your uk knowledge really and okay. like we've played it with everyone we've interviewed so far so uh yeah we'll get started so if you know your soccer you might know this first guy all right let's check it out So he's a very famous English. Okay, it's on Nick's screen. It's on Nick's screen. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Oh. 
David Beckham. Yeah. There's one. So, the second one is arguably the most important person in Britain. Uh, who is that? Uh, the, the Queen, yeah. Yeah. I'll give that. I'll yeah, give that. Queenie. Queen Elizabeth. Queen, yeah. yeah. Okay, Queen Elizabeth. Cool. Um, next guy, he's got a few big hits um, that have been over in America, actually. Um, I think he's toured over in America quite a few uh, times. Ed it's Ed Bang on. Yeah. I'm going to hesitation. Okay, for this next one, we'll give you uh, her real name or her sort of the, the her character. Uh, Hermione. <laughs> uh, Emma, Emma, Emma Watson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get double points. I'm sorry, but you'll yeah, you got four, four for four, four for four. Next one is is sort of the meat, like the body, sort of you know, Judge A G T. Oh yeah, Simon, Simon Cow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Five for five. I'm going crazy. The one's, I'm going we've got like crazy. eight people on. We haven't had ten out of ten yet. So yeah, that, I think we're going for one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Next one. Very famous actor. He is actually English, but a lot of people are mistaking him for for being American. Idris Elba. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was tough. Ten out of ten. Yeah. All right. What we got next? Ah. So this- when you're in the NFL and you're owning the big books. You'll be, the, you'll be going to this guy's restaurant. Uh, Ramsey? 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 Gordon Ramsey? That's the one. Yeah. All right, that. Got okay, three, so this huh? next one is probably the most stereotypical thing we are known for, was British are known for. So what is this in uh, the cup? It's tea. Yeah. What, what do y'all call it? Y'all call it tea, huh? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 No, we're not going to get 10 out of 10 here. Surely not. Well, this next one, again, is it's a food. Um, and again, we're, we're well known for this food. It's an English meal. Famous English yeah. meal. Yeah. Fish and chips. Oh. We're one, this, away, yeah. we're one away from a full 10 out of 10. Four. Yeah. So this last guy, you, I mean, you could be playing against him. You could be, you know, you could be tackling him in a, in a few years' time. He's like maybe the one of the most famous English American football players. Yeah. Oh man. Oh. He has played for the Dolphins as well, if that helps. Okay, okay, give me a second. Uh, I don't know if he's on that team. Uh, I don't think he's on team anymore at the moment. I don't know what he looks like, but is you said Dolphins, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Jay Ajahi. Jay Ajahi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boom. I mean, that is the first 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Never had 10 out of 10. We even had two guys from Florida State on together, and they got nine as a team. So, <laughs> <first>. <laughs> We're coming around to the very end. We have four minutes left before the thing cuts out. So Tristan's going to take this one. It's called This or That, and he'll explain what it's about. Okay, I'm just letting you know my... Uh... My fiance gonna be helping me. This is Josie. We can help you. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> What's up from England? I've just got some quick fire questions. This or that sort of thing. What would you right. rather? First, when it comes to top of your head, so win the national championship with Houston or guarantee itself as a first round draft pick? National championship. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> Heisman Trophy winner or NFL Hall of Famer? Heisman Trophy winner. Ooh. What, what, how, 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 why? Just very quickly, why Heisman? Most people have said Hall of Fame. Uh, it's because that's that's right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Come on, when you get drafted, would you rather be drafted to a team that's just won the Super Bowl or that's in the middle of a rebuild? Uh, no, nah, I like being around winners. Uh, Super Bowl. Oh, that's the first one we've ever had. Love it. it. Love it. And also, Love disclaimer, that. disclaimer, um, Grant is happy to play for any NFL team. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you're going to rebuild, Grant will happily play for you. Right. Just have to say Right. That. Right. <laughs> would you rather play for a team that's based in a sort of warm state like Texas, or would you mind going somewhere like Philly, where it's a little bit more cold? What sort of climate do you want to be in? Buffalo. Oh, Yeah. I got it. It can't be cold. I mean, it can. It can. But I, <laughs> I'd rather be, rather be warm. Yeah. 
are you the locker room, ro- there, sorry, locker room leader sort of type, or are you a bit more of a quiet sort of guy who just gets down to business and just does what you got to do? What was the first option? Um, vocal locker room leader, leader yeah. sort of loud vocal guy. Yeah, I'm more vocal for sure. Wicked. And um, again, when you do make it to the NFL, if the GM for your team says, you know, we've been offered the opportunity to go and play in London in front of ninety thousand people, are you hoping that your GM says yes to that, or would you rather not come over to the UK? Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. You like to hear. That's the only question. That, man. Is it the right and a wrong answer? <laughs> <laughs> you got the right answer. <laughs> right answer. Grant, well, brilliant. Well, we've got a minute left before it cut off. Um, just got to finish with thank you so much for, for joining us. And of course, we know it's a big year for you um, as a team, but you've got personal goals and obviously life. We've all been to college, not been college athletes, I'm afraid. But, um, <laughs> but you know, big year for you. Um, are you looking forward to the challenge of, of getting your name read out next year? For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I am. And I appreciate you guys having me. And we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Too. Grant, thank you very much, bud. You take care and uh, hopefully the next time we speak, you're on, a, you're on the New York Giants. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all, right. Right. <laughs> all the Jags, all the Raiders, all whatever. Later, man. You take care, bud. See you later, mate. Right, you too. Bye. 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 Bye.